Welcome back to Lab Rack Scientific. In today's episode, I want to talk about hot air balloons. They're simple, but really cool. Now this is the balloon I'll be using for these experiments. It's made out of tissue paper, and it's glued together with white glue. Now it's 1.4 meters tall and 0.23 meters in diameter. And for these experiments, I'm going to be using an open bottom design. This means that the bottom of the balloon is opened up to the atmosphere. So let's fill up the balloon and let it fly one more time. Just got to turn on my heat gun. And start heating up the air. Three, two, one. Now the question I'm trying to answer today is what makes a hot air balloon work? Now, the general answer is it's full of hot air. Hot air rises, so the balloon will rise. While it's generally true, it doesn't really get to the basic physics of what's going on inside the hot air balloon. Now, I tried to do some research and couldn't find a whole lot of experiments or a lot of detailed physics of what's going on inside that balloon. So I'm going to give it a shot today by using some basic physics and some experimentation to see if we can establish what's happening in the balloon to make it rise. Now, before we get started, let's take a look at a free body diagram of a hot air balloon. Okay, so let's construct the free body diagram for the hot air balloon. Now, the yellow represents the skin of the balloon and the green arrows represent the internal pressure. Notice that the arrows are all the same size, so that means all the pressures are equal on all the surfaces inside the balloon. Now the side-to-side -side pressure forces, the lateral forces, are equal and opposite. So Newton says there'll be no lateral motion from side to side because those forces cancel. So we can neglect those in our analysis. Now the internal pressure is also acting downward. However, there's no surface for that pressure to push on, so there's no downward force. We can clean up our upward forces by making them all parallel, and so the pressure is pushing on the upper surface of the balloon. We can consolidate that down to one pressure arrow, pointing upward. Now there's also the weight of the balloon material, and that's acting downwards. There's also atmospheric pressure pushing down on top of the balloon. We can consolidate those forces and have one downward atmospheric pressure force arrow. So there's our free body diagram. It consists of three forces, the downward atmospheric pressure force, the upward internal pressure force, and the downward weight force. So where does the upward force in a hot air balloon come from? Well, since we're talking about a hot air balloon, let's start with the hot air. Now, in my experiments, I'm utilizing a heat gun as my heat source, and I have it placed in a protective bucket so I don't set my tissue paper on fire, just to be safe. So now, let's take a look at what happens when I heat up a gas. So here's what's going on inside the hot air balloon. Now, before I start adding heat to the system, the molecules on the inside of the balloon are at the same temperature as the molecules on the outside. Now these molecules are bouncing around inside with a certain amount of kinetic energy and a certain amount of momentum. And they impact the sides of the balloon, creating a pressure. Now since the gas molecules outside the balloon are at the same temperature, they have the same kinetic energy and the same momentum. So they're imparting an opposite force in the inward direction. So the net force is zero, so the balloon neither wants to expand or contract. Now as I add heat to the system, the molecules inside the balloon pick up kinetic energy. So they're moving a lot faster and they impart more momentum to the balloon material. And that momentum is greater than the momentum provided by the molecules on the outside. So the pressure on the inside of the balloon increases and the balloon will want to expand. So the higher velocity molecules will impart more momentum to the walls of the balloon. And these higher energy collisions result in a higher gas pressure. So let's take a look at the ideal gas law. PV equals nRT. P is pressure, V is volume, N is the number of molecules, R is the universal gas constant, and T is the temperature of the gas. 
So if the volume is held constant, the pressure will rise as temperature increases. So if I have a gas inside of a glass bottle and I increase the temperature, the pressure inside the bottle will increase because the walls of the bottle will not expand. Now if we want pressure to remain constant, we have to let the volume increase as we raise the temperature. So if I have the air in a plastic bag and heat it up, the bag will expand and thus the pressure will remain constant while I add heat. So the question is, is the open bottom balloon a constant volume system or a constant pressure system? Well, here's a picture of my molecules and I have the hotter air collecting at the top, warm air at the middle, and cooler ambient air at the bottom. So what's happening is that hotter air at the top is somewhat trapped by the cooler molecules down below. As such, it can be considered a quasi-constant volume system, meaning that the pressure will actually rise inside the balloon towards the top. Now there's no clear line of demarcation, so there ends up being a thermal gradient in the balloon. Hot air at the top, warm air at the middle, and cooler air at the bottom. Now the collisions that occur in the balloon create the pressure. And the higher the kinetic energy of the molecules, the greater the resultant pressure. So that means there's a higher pressure at the top of the balloon and a lower pressure at the bottom. Since there's a thermal gradient in the vertical direction, that means there's a pressure gradient in the vertical direction as well. Now remember, we're neglecting any of the lateral forces. So I'm just going to concern myself with the upward motion and the downward motion of the particles. Now the higher energy particles, due to the higher temperature, are moving upwards and they have a certain amount of momentum. Now those particles, when they collide the balloon film, they transfer that momentum to the balloon. Now this momentum transfer creates the pressure. And a pressure acting over a surface creates a force. And the equation that governs that is force is equal to pressure times area. So that pressure force acting over that surface creates an upward pressure force. Now the particles are also moving downward and they collide with the cooler molecules down below. So momentum is transferred at that point too. Now eventually this momentum is transferred down towards the bottom of the balloon. However, there's no surface for them to collide with, so no momentum is transferred to the balloon itself. So there's no downward force. Now we can't forget the fact that there are actually two downward forces acting on the balloon. There's the atmospheric pressure pushing down on the balloon top, and there's the weight of the balloon material itself. Now, if the upward force is greater than the combination of the atmospheric pressure force pushing down and the weight of the balloon pushing down, then the balloon will rise. Now what I want to do is prove that there is a pressure force pushing the top of the balloon upward. So what I have is a simple rig here made out of corrugated cardboard and a little donut supported by four pieces of 2 by 4 And here is a piece of the tissue paper used to make the balloon, same thickness and all, supported on the ring. Now what I want to do is place pennies on the tissue paper and see if they can be supported. Now what I have is I have ambient air pressure on top of the tissue paper and also the same ambient air pressure pushing on the bottom. So there's no pressure differential between the top and bottom surfaces. So there's no pressure force pushing up or down. So now let's place some pennies on here and see what happens. As you expect, the tissue paper collapses because there's no supporting force to help support the pennies. Now let's go look at the pressurized balloon and see what happens. Now my balloon is pressurized. Let me place pennies on top to see if they can be supported. Of course, it tries to make the balloon unstable, so let me hold it a little bit. As you can see, I can place several pennies on top, and the top of the balloon will not collapse. So that's telling me that there's obviously pressure inside pushing up on the top of the balloon to support not only the material, but the pennies as well. So this is my qualitative or subjective experiment to see if there's a pressure gradient inside the balloon. I've got my balloon tethered to the floor. I've got it full of hot air. So now I'm just going to kind of squeeze the balloon along its length to see if I can sense the difference in pressure. Now at the top it feels pretty tight and it bounces back pretty quick. At the middle it doesn't feel quite as tight and maybe doesn't accelerate out when I let it go as much. Now at the bottom there's hardly any force on the inside. 
So from that, I can surmise that it feels like there is a pressure differential in the balloon. The higher pressure at the top, the lower pressure at the bottom. So, is it possible to determine the pressure inside the balloon, at least near the top? Now, I don't have access to super sensitive pressure gauges, so that's going to be kind of hard to do. However, if I'm creative, I think there's a way I can do it. Now, what I want to do is I want to determine the free lift of the balloon. How I'm going to do that is by adding pennies to the balloon to get it so it neither goes up or down, so it's neutrally buoyant. If I can do that, then maybe I can back out the pressure that's pushing up on the balloon. So now, I have my balloon inflated with hot air, and it's tethered to the ground so it doesn't float all the way up to the ceiling. And I'm going to place my little cardboard cup holder on top of the balloon to help distribute the load a little bit. What I'm going to want to do is add one penny at a time to try to get the balloon to slowly want to try to sink. And that'll give me an idea of the free lift of the balloon. There's one penny, two, three, four, still got positive lift, five, still got positive lift, six, still has positive lift, seven, all right, seven is pretty close to it. Let me see what happens if I add the eighth. There's the eighth penny. So somewhere between seven and eight pennies is the amount of free lift I have on this hot air balloon. Now the first step in trying to estimate the internal pressure of the hot air balloon is to determine the area of the top of the balloon. Now the balloon I'm using in my experiments has a radius of 0 0.23 meters, and it's a circle. Now I know that the area of a circle is pi r squared, so if I substitute in values, I get an area of 0 0.17 meters squared. The next step is to determine the force pushing downward on the balloon system. And that force is actually the weight of the balloon and anything it's carrying. So from a previous experiment, the balloon was capable of supporting 7 pennies, plus the cup plate, plus its own balloon material weight. Now the mass was measured to be 0 0.066 kilograms. Now what I need is the downward force, or the weight of the system. So that's going to be the mass times acceleration due to gravity. And that comes out to be 0 0.65 newtons. So the pressure force inside the balloon pushing upwards needs to be able to support 0 0.65 newtons. So here's my pressure diagram of the system. I have 0 0.65 newtons pushing downward, and I have some unknown pressure force pushing up on the balloon top. Now force is equal to pressure times area. So if I use some algebra, I can solve for the unknown pressure. So pressure becomes force divided by area. Putting in values, I get 3.8 newton meters squared. That's the pressure force required to support the 0.65 newtons. That's not a very high pressure. So there you have it. I use some basic physics and some simple experiments to try to figure out what's going on inside a hydro balloon. Now, in another episode, I'm going to be using a closed balloon system. Take a look at the physics associated with that and to see if there's any differences between a closed bottom balloon and an open bottom balloon. Well, I hope you learned something and I hope to see you in future episodes of Lab Rat Scientific.